Diabetes is a chronic autoimmune condition affecting millions of people around the world. Untreated, it can be deadly. There's no cure and it can't be reversed. But as Marsa discovered, recent technological advances have been a game changer for children with type 1 diabetes. As always though, there's a catch. John Ray Hendricks is three, a typical toddler, curious about everything with boundless energy. But when the bubbly child was just a year old, he became inexplicably irritable. All the time, his mother Cameron was worried. He showed signs of frequent urination. At the time he was on diapers and he would have about 10 to 12 diapers just at night. And then that was very alarming for me. And then he was always thirsty. He hardly ate anything. A trip to the doctor confirmed a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Initially, I laughed at the doctor and I was like, there's no way that my son was one years old, one month at that time, that he could be a type 1 diabetic with no family history whatsoever of type 1 diabetes. Here we go. <gasps> no! Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition in which the body attacks the pancreas and destroys its ability to make the hormone insulin. Insulin is like a key which unlocks cells to allow sugar in. That's used as energy. Left untreated, and it very rapidly becomes deadly. Unlike type 2 diabetes, it cannot be reversed. There is no cure. And while there is a genetic predisposition, it's believed to be triggered by environmental factors such as viruses. If type 1 diabetes is not picked up early enough by a doctor, you become at risk of a diabetic coma. Most children are admitted to hospital when they're first diagnosed, some even admitted to ICU. And tragically, some don't even make it. She said, well, we need to take him to ICU now because it can be fatal. And I was looking at her and tears were rolling down my face. Pediatric endocrinologist Dr. Michelle Carryhill says there is no relief from the condition and it requires attention 24-7 for the rest of one's life and the careful balancing of blood glucose levels with the right amount of insulin. If you give too much insulin, it takes all the sugar out of the bloodstream and you've got none for your brain to use, none for your heart to use for energy. And if you give too little, the same thing happens. And in the days before we had any insulin therapy, the children and the young people used to die. I do want to emphasize it's nobody's fault. There's nothing a person can do to prevent it. You know that awful helpless feeling you get as a parent when your child is sick? Now imagine having to inject your child with needles every single day, at least three times a day, constantly monitoring their sugar levels with finger pricks. Now this is what a month of daily pricking and injections looks like on your child. And the For John Ray and his mother, the new routine took its toll. We were trained to wake him up every two to three hours to check his sugar levels at night. Every two to yeah. three hours? It was him telling me, mommy, please don't because it hurts. And I'm sitting there and I have to do it. I don't have a choice. Cameron went on the hunt for less traumatizing options for her son and discovered a range of insulin pumps and sensors. The insulin pump is a wearable device that delivers insulin through a small tube inserted under the skin. Integrated with a sensor that continuously measures blood glucose levels, it mimics the job of the pancreas. The pump automatically adjusts insulin delivery based on glucose readings from the sensor an absolute game changer that eliminates the need for frequent manual adjustments with painful injections and finger pricks. So we had to make the decision to change, but the cost was a lot and we couldn't afford it. It may be the future, but for now, there's a snag. It's pricey. The version of the insulin pump that looked the best for them cost at least 45,000 Rand. That's without the sensor that goes with it. How accessible is it for parents? Because it sounds like a dream come true. 
So the problem comes with funding. It really isn't about availability. South Africa is amazing. We have the, the latest technology that comes here, but it comes at a cost. Doctors and people living with diabetes have long been fighting for ways of reducing these costs. As we always do. But unbelievably, Dr. Carrie Hill says there are no statistics on the numbers of people living with the condition in South Africa. Type 1 diabetes is not a notifiable disease, so doctors don't have to report it to a central authority, and so there's no national registry. Living with type 1 diabetes for 15 years, Bridget McNulty has become an advocate for diabetes awareness, trying to get medical aids to recognize that sensor technology is revolutionary, the way of the future, and should be part of the prescribed minimum benefits, which would give all medical aid members access to it, regardless of the scheme they're on. We're appealing to the Council for Medical Schemes to get it covered as a PMB. They have tossed out our appeal and told us that there's not enough evidence that sensor technology is superior to finger stick testing. But there is actual hard evidence that it makes more financial sense to cover sensor technology for people with type 1 than it does to do finger sticks. For Bridget, sensor technology has been a revelation. So there's an app on your phone, and then I click scan and scan it and then I get a reading. Mm -hmm. So it's showing me exactly what my blood sugar is doing the whole day. With finger sticks, best case scenario, you have five to seven finger sticks a day, and that's if your medical aid is very generous. Public sector have nowhere near five to seven finger sticks a day, but that's giving you individual points of data. They don't give me an arrow, they don't tell me where I've been or where I'm going. What this gives me is vision. 30 days, which is amazing. But ranging in price from a thousand rand to several thousand, they don't come cheap. So it gives me my whole day. She believes sensor technology should be freely available, particularly for children. Your average glucose at different times a day. Medical aids have bargaining power. And so to me, it's a conversation between the advocates and between the manufacturers and between the medical aids. And if we could get them in in bulk, then we can start talking about public sector and how we get them available in public sector. So especially when you look at the South African context, right? And you look at how few of us are the privileged few. It's wildly unfair only because it's a numbers game. All type ones in the UK have access to CGM. And since then, they have seen the best results that they have ever seen. Jessica and Cameron Brown are siblings living with type one diabetes, and both of them have the latest technology. Jessica is 17 and was diagnosed at age one. Cameron is 13 and was diagnosed when he was five. Their mother, Anne Brown, says when Jess was diagnosed, she nearly lost her. She was ketoacidotic and pretty much hours away from death. But in the years since then, technology has given them a sense of normality. They do have this gizmo attached to them, but they can do so much more. I can get an alert on my uh, phone as to whether their batteries are low on the pump, which is very nice when you have a teenager because you don't have to be that hovering helicopter parent. Both children are active and spend a lot of time at the beach. The new technology is also waterproof. Jess is a lifeguard and Cameron is training to be one. The two siblings are never far apart. And at first, Cameron was pleased he was like his big sister. About like two weeks in, I was like, oh, I want this to go away to my mom. And she was like, it's not going to go away. You stuck with it to life. And that's when I really realized that this isn't so nice. Jess doesn't mind that she's attached to her insulin pump and sensor 24 seven. And she doesn't get upset when her peers don't know what it is. A lot of my friends joke about me being a cyborg. And I think that that's very funny. So it's a bit of a personality trait. With advancements in technology, children like Jess and Cameron can live a somewhat carefree childhood. People like Bridget are working every day to try and make sensor technology accessible to every child. We've been able to see already in small tests in South Africa that it's cost effective because hospitalizations are so expensive. People who are making decisions about type 1 diabetes, I would really encourage them to invite people with type 1 into the room when they're making these decisions. 
Back in the Hendricks household, it was like Christmas when their medical aid went against the norm and offered to pay for an insulin pump and sensor in full. Oh, it has changed our lives drastically, hey, I must say. And no more finger pricking. No more finger pricking. So his fingers are not Aina anymore. Not at all. <laughs> no more crying. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.